Hi, welcome to the Indulge podcast. I'm Manu Vipin and we have with us today Yog Japi, the founder of Chennai-based theatre company, Theatre Y. He's an actor, writer, as well as trainer and has worked with many international clients like the British Council, the United Nations, as well as many schools and colleges in India. He focuses on training children in theatre and is passionate about mainstreaming theatre as a form of social change and development. As his theatre celebrates 20th year, Yog has brought about a lot of training programs and he's here to tell us about that and a lot more. So, how did you get into theatre? Uh, jogging the memory down, that would be about 20, 21 years ago. It was actually um, a love for poetry and performing poetry that got me into theatre, uh, acting on stage. Just writing poems and um, was, I just read of a random call that uh, they want some voices uh, to, to hear poetry. And when I went there, uh, some of the poems that were given to me were in complete gibberish and uh, they were examples of sound poetry. And I think um, I just sounded them out and I guess they liked the sounds I made. And uh, I think that's how uh, So this was when started. you were in school or? No, no, no. Uh, this was uh, after my college and I was well into my uh, other part of the work. And uh, I used to do this. Uh, I always had this passion towards writing and performance. This was the first uh, step into the space. The love for poetry and I always felt that poetry needs to be performed or rather read aloud. So that's how the whole journey theater, uh, towards theatre. Yeah. yeah. So uh, did theatre help you as an actor? Absolutely. Um, I think that it is the devices and the exercises and the entire approach towards mm -hmm. acting uh, what we call as the dramatic process or the theatrical process, starting from uh, concept, the ideation, the improvisation, um, rehearsing and actually living with your story and your characters is something we can do in the dramatic process. Um, because you stay with the story, you stay with the characters over a period of time. And uh, you have, and then of course you are performing live which makes a very, very significant difference to your own energies because it's like you have rehearsed it so much that you need to make it sound or look like it's happening for the first time. Um, in every aspect, whether it is the physicality or the voice or just the approach, uh, the dramatic process or what we call as the theatrical process enabled my growth as an actor enormously. Yeah. So when did films happen? Um, films happened uh, 2008 or something. I, I forget the... So it was the first film uh, in Tamil. Um, my first film was Kaka Kaka. Uh -huh. And um, I think... Very popular. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was through my plays and uh, Gotham, in fact, uh, was looking for an actor to fill that space. And he was just asking around and uh, in the, the team of his associate directors, they got in touch with me. I had a friend there and they said that we know him. He is, he, he's doing a play currently. And uh, in fact, uh, that time I was playing the part of Shakuni, the character in Mahabharat. Theatre. Uh, yeah, I was doing a drama and uh, I was doing a play and playing that character. And I got a call uh, from his office, Gotham's office, that come over and let's just do a very basic screen test and we'll speak about the character. And that's how it started. Um, that was Kaka Kaka. And after that, it's just one film led to the other and this is where we are today. So, you've acted mostly in Tamil and Malayalam also. Yeah, Tamil, uh, Telugu, Malayalam also, yeah. So, tell us about your, like, your, uh, lot of... Malayalam projects lined up. Like uh, there are latest release. The latest release is a really good, a uh, fun film celebrating um, our breed, the indie breed, the dog. Uh, it's called Namer, and uh, it's doing the rounds in the theaters right now. It just got released just yesterday. 
yeah my journey in the uh, malayalam uh, cinema has been amazing and it still continues to be because it's really interesting the number of stories that have been told and the what we are discussing right now a lot of them are in the storytelling space but the first film was seventh day and after that there was ed and uh, then there was one more film um, and then was neema so that's generally been the process so so in the tamil film industry which is your next which would be your next movie uh to release we are shooting so release wise it would be 800 uh, that is the biopic on the great spinner uh, muthaya muralidharan from Sri, the sri lankan cricket team uh, what we are shooting right now is the sequel of the cult hit sudh kavum so so the kavum 2 is in the shooting process so that's what is happening right now yeah so coming back to theater you're celebrating 20 years yeah. of theater why <laughs> so just tell me like how was the journey um oh it's been very uh, enriching to say the least very uh, a lot of learning uh, very fulfilling because it has always been that um theater wise vision had always been uh, performing and uh, especially performing in all kinds of spaces not just the traditional spaces of performance but performing building an entire ecosystem of artists and actors who train and they keep training and working on their skills and they keep performing so there was the training aspect uh, it's always been there the performance aspect and and the journey then moved towards or the realization that drama and arts have a very very significant role to play in social change uh, with organizations that are involved in social change and do social work also so that has been an very integral part of theater wise journey right through these 20 years so making tailor made or as we say bespoke uh programs for the organizations uh for individuals and communities working with diversity uh that is there uh in our society itself uh so that is that is generally been uh the a very integral part of the journey so you have uh, individual plays also because you have yes. a group right yeah so can you just tell me like is there anything in uh something that you are uh, working on right now as part of this 20th yeah anniversary. we are working on a series of performances that we would like to uh, identify spaces in chennai various spaces so we'll be starting a series that will lead to um, a show uh, in one, in one of the auditoriums here so that will be a collection of various stories that we have we are in the process of adapting for the stage so it could be vernacular stories it could be mythological stories it could be stories from our own oral tradition of storytelling like panchatantra and jataka tales and so it's we are picking stories and trying to see to it that um, and weave them to form an evening of uh, performances so that's what is the plan right now and uh, fifth coincidently theater wise birthday is the 15th of august so all the plans are for the month of august and we'll be looking at that entire week and we'll try and fill it with as many performances as we can that will lead In to august. yeah uh, august 2023 yeah okay you coming back to your your passion about folk tales and where does it come from is it some way related to your childhood memories have been just spaces uh, of story stories heard from my grandfather um it was a uh, almost every evening ritual that before we went to sleep uh, we would ask him that tell us stories and uh, it was amazing that you know uh, we would tell him that tell us this story and that story he would have told us at least 25 times uh, before that but it was amazing to see that every time he told the story there would always be a little variation or 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 a little more interactivity or as it slowly the storytelling 
spaces became conversations you know and that was i think from there on that that hook happened into these stories and most of the stories were all our mythology all these uh, all our oral traditions and then as we grew of course you we grew with amar chitra kathas and all the comics that uh, uh, we've grown up with so it's it's just gone deep into uh, the dna itself i think yeah so i think you take all these folk tales to children also because you yeah. organize a lot of workshops for children yeah that yeah. is what you really want to integrate theater yeah. into education yeah so tell us a little more about like how this stories have helped to capture their attention or... um i think largely we've always believed that arts drama drama and arts uh, have a very integral space in the curriculum in children's learning spaces right from the beginning so we they do they learn about drama techniques But and then schools are not giving that much importance to it is drama. growing it is growing and uh, of course the space needs to open out a lot more and and i think that a very specific effort i mean a very concerted effort needs to be made towards uh, integrating these spaces and exposing or rather making these spaces experiential for children uh, that they practice and they actually experience the i would say magic because it is magic um, how the transformation how the awareness of their own selves and you know their own emotional uh, emotional range and everything happens through storytelling and drama and the arts they become uh, more like open and more confident of course, yes, theater yes yes than to yeah. their personality yeah. we've seen that growth happening we've seen uh, children who have been who joined our you know the theater space who entered the theater space when they were in class 2 and 3 and you know they've been continuing and by the time they came to class 12 and even after that through to college and even in their careers right now uh how they speak so i mean it's so insightful when we hear their lived experience of what it was uh, uh because of their exposure to drama and art so early in their lives you know and i think the credit goes to the school to the parents and to the children uh, themselves you know so you work in many schools in the city or how is their response like when you approach them or do they approach you um usually they approach us for specific uh, like uh, annual day shows and things like that uh, but we ideally would like a consistent um uh, exposure to that program we would like that to be integrated into the program um and um, it depends on what they want and we tailor make it to you know how much time the children can give what is the space we can find in their uh, existing timetable and existing work and things like that so based on whatever their needs are then the program is made accordingly So how long like is it a one month thing or it's like one year when you when a school approach you how do you go about it So usually it is a six month uh, program because so it starts generally it starts rough uh, within a week or within a month after the school starts after the academic year starts so because the children take about a couple of weeks to settle in with everything else and then uh, this starts around about um, july or so and then it goes on till december max till the pongal holidays in jan because usually they move into their final exams and all that after that so after that break then the children and the parents are all focusing on the on the final exams that happen usually in around march so our program of 6 months finishes off generally around mid jan and then it picks up in their next following academic year so the entire structure is is the entire syllabus that we have or the structure is tailor made to suit the age group and their own so it it grows along with their own physiological and uh, mental growth you know sir so you have spoken a lot about mental health and how theater can help mm. um in maybe reducing the stress levels in children or adults 
so how can you just uh, tell us like how theater is going to yeah i think a large part of it is the ability that awareness of one's own uh, emotional state uh, the 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 diversity that is that exists in the individual and i think first of all the step happens that they get aware of themselves they get aware of themselves their world their likes and dislikes their own emotions what are the triggers they understand the concept of uh, action and reaction and a, and an external trigger and then how they react to that now everything all those things are happening in any story that you pick uh, and you are exploring that story dramatically through the drama through the process of drama and then they and the process of drama also gives them the ability to um, think ahead um, that what are the options open i could have done this i could have said this this is what i felt and then they role play it so and through the role play they also understand that what happens when i feel this emotion so from that awareness starts uh, the ability to then understand themselves in the real world so we start from the individual and then we move on to relationships because that is an extremely integral part of an individual's growth so it could be relationships with everything including things like what is my relationship with my school bag or with my cell phone or with my uh, pen or what does it mean to me emotionally you know so their relationship with things people and then they discover their own circles of relationships and then they understand you know what is the inner circle and then as the circle gets bigger and bigger so they understand the nature of relationships they understand uh they deal with conflict they deal with desires they deal with management of that conflict any conflict so everything through acting yes actually. everything happens through storytelling through a uh, drama and then we move on to the third part which is generally um their own relationship with the entire world around them so then we move into the larger spaces of what it is what what does it mean to be socially responsible what does it mean to be um ecologically responsible uh, so it moves into those areas so it 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 grows with the child and as they grow in their school um like i said physiologically you have any experiences to share like any kid that you had uh, trained and how they transformed any anything that you remember oh there have been many actually who um I remember started when they were in class 2 and 3 I can take examples of many children who by the time they came to class 5 and 6 we were actually sitting in the canteen and they were drawing out their life map and they were saying that this is what they want to do in life and um it's um, it's amazing that those children a uh, few years back came back to uh, theater way to do an internship to do a drama internship they have become facilitators and trainers in theater by itself and now have moved on to uh, carve their own journeys their own pathways couple of them are uh, quite a few of them are uh, pursuing drama abroad uh, some of them are doing some drama based research uh, in very very uh, with some very interesting topics and a lot of them i think a very significant percentage they have moved on to their choices in their career so they could be um either they are homemakers or they are and whether they are homemakers or whether they are professionals outside pursuing their careers they have always come back and made it a point to tell us how much those drama sessions and the theater sessions really enable them in various ways and even now when they are looking at uh, their spaces or when they face certain challenges they go back to those spaces and it stays in their memory you know so i think one of the very relevant or or a strong impact of a space like 
drama and experience drama is that it stays in your memory for for many many years to come you know 20 years is a long time so you think like you have anything more to achieve you have set any goals for the future oh the um the what we intend to do what we hope to achieve and we are what we would like to achieve that list never stops um i think it's it's more going deeper and the goals are to um do a lot more of what we are doing uh do a lot more in the social development and the social change space also uh create an ecosystem of artists who can build careers out of uh their own skills and it starts from the training space itself so it should be like those who come to us and get trained immediately there are career pathways open out there are job opportunities that are opening out uh, so that they can take that choice that i want to be a professional artist i want to be a professional actor uh, and that's not even taking into account films films is there but there are a whole lot of other areas also where uh their skills can be applied and can be they they can look at those spaces professionally so it's to build that ecosystem and to work a lot and work in a uh, work a lot more deeper into in the social change and in the social empowerment spaces including our like projects that could be working in the remote villages that could be working with diverse groups with diverse challenges that's essentially what our vision Hoping is for yeah the yeah so you've done both theater as well as movies which you're doing now yeah. so which are you more comfortable with um yeah it's something that i battle with all the time but i think um i think there are lots of a- areas in cinema i'm very comfortable with they are equally they are challenges um drama and the live performance space has their challenges has a very unique set of challenges um deep down i prefer or rather i really love the stage and the live performance by stage i don't mean like a like a traditional Perform. stage but just performing live you know and just performing for people and actually um being interactive in that performance the training part is something that you really yeah enjoy yeah yes training i mean it is important because we need to build that skill set it is it is like just like how you learn any language you need to learn the language the grammar and then you need to keep rehearsing it so you need to keep practicing so training is an integral part of it i do enjoy it and what happens is that everything that i have experienced in my years in film or stage is immediately put into the training uh, program so to keep it absolutely relevant for the time and for the age that we are in now uh, so the programs constantly keep finding their relevance through my experience and not just through my experience through everything that i have learned from each and every person that i have worked with Even you know children. yeah they they are the biggest uh, that, that's it's that space where i've learned the most uh, uh from the children so that way i'm just really blessed with the fact that you know i've worked and i have had these conversations and interacted with such diverse groups and that only adds to my learning and uh, i think that excites me the most what i will be learning uh, in the days to come <clears throat> and in the future so in the movie front is there any role that any particular role that you are like longing to do or any industry that you prefer working uh, like you've done telugu malayalam yeah. so how is your take on that malayalam they say it's more realistic and then uh, so what what is your take on that is it i think for me um, as an actor the next call that would come in irrespective of the industry uh, that is a challenge and i'd love to work with um that call that comes in that explains the character and the story so from an actor's point of view i think all of those spaces are very challenging and they are different 
so it calls on you and your skills that as an actor how much are you able to work harder on yourself so as to match the expectation of let's say the director because still the director okays the shot i mean you're not done with the shot you know so till he okays it so it's wonderful to do these diverse uh, uh, languages yes. and industries you understand and i understand their approaches to work uh, i respect uh, that respect comes in that you see that you know largely everybody is making trying to tell stories and to try and find your own space in that storytelling uh, scenario is is a wonderful space to be in actually so any industry any story any character it's a challenge i'd love to do it uh it's just logistically whether it's possible given the schedules and all that but it's each and every experience has been extremely rewarding and i've learned enormously from uh every single film that i've done or every day at the shoot or at my rehearsal or working with the children any space yeah okay okay thank you for taking time thank you thank you so much and we really enjoyed having you Thank you. It was a pleasure.